Hi, David the Bruce here on Steel This Show, and today it is my privilege to show you Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley is an early TV show that has slipped into the public domain, and it's an important one. It stars Gail Davis. And why is this show so important? Well, let me tell you. In 1954, TV was more or less just kind of starting out, you know, it was in its uh, pioneer days, as it were. And there are a lot of cowboy shows on in, in, in the early 50s and throughout even to the mid-60s. Tons of them. It was like America was obsessed with cowboy shows. And in 1954, Annie Oakley premiered, and it ran through 1957. And what makes her show so unique is that she wasn't a white male. All the TV shows that had cowboys were men. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this was in stark contrast. It was the only show at that time, really, that had a single female. She wasn't married or going with anybody, never had a boyfriend. It is really an amazing show for 1954, when women were being domesticated and you know housewives and not being able to have careers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, outside of the home. Here's this iconic image of a single woman, unattached, doing amazing things like going after bad guys and bringing them in. Oh, I'm just so excited to show you TV's first superhero woman. Yeah. Gail Davis as Annie Oakley. I'll talk a little bit more about her in the next episode of Steal This Show. But watch over on the side of your screen as you watch this, and and you'll you'll see some factoids that I'm gonna I'm gonna put up that'll help you to um, understand the significance of this very very important series done by a very underrated and important role model for young girls. I'm David the Bruce. Bullseye! Annie Oakley hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. Take a look, Frenchie. Why don't you let me have a gun, Annie? Oh, not for a few years yet, Tag. Guns aren't for kids. I can teach you to handle a bow, son. Anything I can do with shooting iron, I can do with this Indian artillery. Oh, you think you can, huh? I know you're a mighty good shot, Choctaw, but uh, try this one. Tag, see if you can find a piece of shale, will you? Okay. What kind of shenanigans is going on here? You just watch, Choctaw. All right, I'm ready, Tag. Throw. There's only one woman in the world that can shoot like that. Annie Oakley. Right. And a little too close for comfort. Get your rifle. Hey, ain't that just like a woman? Who ever heard of shooting a bow backwards? It's not yeah. your fault, Choctaw. It's these modern inventions. But anyway, can Choctaw teach me? Well, I guess so. Just keep them pinned down so they won't bother us when we go into action.
Come on, let's head back to town. Yeah, I can teach you how to handle a bow, but I can't teach you how to outsmart no women. I'll get my horse in. All right, Dag. You do that. No, look. Some crazy galoot. He may be crazy, but he sure means business. Duck. I see part of her rifle in the hat, Annie. I do, too, but this pop gun won't carry that far. Who'd be shooting at us, and why? Well, maybe he wasn't shooting at us a purpose. Maybe he was. That's him, and remember, I want him alive first. Somebody's driving that team in an awful hurry. Chuck, Chuck, come back here and get down. Sounded like a lot more horses to me than just one team. There's something funny going on. Choctaw, you keep that sniper covered with your six gun. I'm going to try and get in range. Can I come along? You stay right where you are. Keep on the cover. What was it, Annie? Oh, I never got a look at him. You sure hit the bullseye. No. This is one time I don't even know where the bullseye is. But there's one around somewhere. Come on, let's get the horses. Come on. Sign for Rick. Well, where's Sam? Come on. I was supposed to go to town today. How did he get out here? Well, it must have been that buckboard that we heard. Oh, Mr. Forbes! Whee! Choctaw, come here. Oh, it's time. Come on, Choctaw. Tag, you stay here and watch the buckboard. Here. He's gone, Chapter. Then we found Sam's body at the bottom of Eagle Cliff. Any bullet wounds? No. No, not a single one, Lofty. Somebody must have pushed him over the edge. But who would have done it? He didn't have any enemies. Well, who took those pot shots at us? And why was that wagon traveling so fast when we heard it? Burying will be Wednesday. We're all sorry, Choctaw. Sign Forbes was a square shooting as they come. Best boss I ever had. Say, I guess I'm the boss now. You? you? Yeah. Sime said I worked for him for so long that he wanted me to have the ranch when he died. We made a will. Real legal. That was mighty fine of Mr. Forbes. Yeah, but I'd rather have Sam alive and have a ranch, even a good one. And it's a poorest spread in Diablo. Well, so long. 
So long, Doctor. If we ever catch the man behind this gun, we'll know what happened to Sime. That shirt not finished yet? Oh, Annie, I'm afraid sewing just isn't your line of work. You better stick to your guns. You're handier with them. Well, that doesn't mean I can't sew. Just look at that stitch. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I didn't have my mind on my sewing. I've been thinking about that four was killing all week. No, it was just an accident, Annie. Some ran a hand taking shots at you. Just a coincidence. Yeah, well, it was too much of a coincidence for me. That's no trick. Can you get a moving target? I never tried. Well, here's one. You all set? Uh-huh. Shoot! <laughs> well, well, well. Gee, Lucky, I'm sorry. I didn't... Nice work, Tag. He asked for it. <laughs> Annie, Lofty, coming from the ranch, I saw four hombres fixing to hold up the Mineral City stage. How do you know? Well, they were in ambush, and they had on masks. Come on, Lofty. Can I come on? Not on your life. Stay here. They're always telling us to stay home. Someday she'll need us when she's in trouble. And she'll be sorry. She's pretty. She's the prettiest girl I've ever laid my eyes on. She's even prettier when she's not unconscious. Huh? Oh, what do you do? Same as we would to a man. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm just not used to dreadful things like this. Is the gentleman badly hurt? It's worse than that. Oh, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Elaine Forbes. Forbes? I'm on my way to visit my uncle, Simon Forbes. Perhaps you know him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Forbes. Your uncle had an accident oh. about... Oh, no. Oh, don't cry, oh, no. little gal. We'll look after you. Sure we will. Lofty can take Miss Forbes back to town as soon as we get the driver inside. Oh. Hey, let me drive. No, that's all right, Chalk Todd. No trouble at all. You're all just too wonderful. Think nothing of it. I've got to look after the driver. You all right now? Ain't she pretty? I 
think you said that before. Annie, you're acting awful funny. Just a little bit jealous? Oh, stop talking nonsense. No, there's, there's something funny about that girl I can't figure out. She seems all right to me. Maybe it's because you got what they call a woman's intuition. Maybe I have. And why shouldn't I? Oh, shucks. I didn't mean any harm. I, I guess it's just because you're such a good scout, a fellow almost forgets that you're a girl, too. Thanks, Choctaw. That's the nicest compliment I've had all week. Simon still have his ranch when he passed away? Oh, sure. Hi, fellas. Hi, Annie. Hello, Miss Forbes. So nice to see you, my dear. Thank you, Joshua. But why don't you call me Elaine? I'm named after the lily maid of Astolot. She's my ideal. I never heard of Astor. What's his name? Is that someplace back east? <laughs> no, Choctaw. Elaine was a lady in a book about King Arthur by Tennyson. That's right. Wasn't she wonderful? Sure suits you. Lily made. Uh, Elaine, the other passenger didn't have as much as a piece of paper to identify him. Did you know who he was? Oh, no. He was a stranger. And I don't approve of speaking to strange men. Double room. You were telling me about Uncle Simon's ranch, Choctaw. Oh, yeah. You see, you, you being next to Ken, you should have got it. But he left it to me. Why, Chocta, darling, what's the matter? Oh, I get to sneezing like that, and sometimes it almost kills me. But I'm all right now. You poor darling. I'm so glad you got the ranch. Yeah, but just between you and me, it ain't worth the paper the wheels wrote on. Oh, I don't care about the ranch. I just wanted to visit Uncle Simon and rest a while. Oh, Miss Elaine, ma'am. Will you just bring your pretty little bones out there and stay all you want? Uh, ain't that right, folks? Good sure idea. It is. Why, Choctaw, I think I'll accept your hospitality. It might be such fun. <laughs> sure it will. Now, you go on up there and pack your dead. I got a rig. You sweet thing. I won't be long. Come on, fellas, I want to talk to you. Both of you. I found this in the dead passenger's belongings. Key for an old-time key-winding watch. Huh. What about it? I'll never see a man carry a watch key and no watch. Someday I'm going to get a watch, but a stem winder. Uh, what are you getting at, Annie? Just this. We never found the watch. And Elaine was in the stagecoach with him long enough to take it. And his papers. She sure jumped to conclusions when I told her about her uncle. Oh, Annie. Annie, ever since Simon Forbes died, you've had plum loco ideas. Elaine wouldn't rob anybody. And, and if she did, why would she leave all that money in his pocket? I don't know, but... Well, he must have had a watch, a good big silver one. Well, maybe it was getting thick. Say, I don't want to keep Elaine waiting. See you later. So long. Not much of a clue, Annie. Well, maybe it isn't, but... Oh, well, forget it. Come on, Tag, let's go get supper. After all the trouble I had getting rid of Simon and Harris, and now that old fool truck toss standing in the way. Seems to me I've been going to quite a bit of trouble myself. Sure you have. But who does all the thinking? Who's got the ideas? You? Don't make me laugh. Maybe we ought to back out. Back out when that ranch may be worth $50,000? Listen, I'm going to get that will and get that ranch before these clock uppers get wise. Yahoo! Elaine! Are you ready? Are you ready, honey? Chata, darling, I couldn't possibly go for a ride. I've got a perfectly fiendish headache. Would you be furious with me if I asked you to go to town to get some smelling salts for me? Oh, no. Well, I'd be furious if you didn't. Now, you just lie down there and rest your pretty little head, and I'll hightail it to the store.
Any luck? Got the old fool out of the way, but I can't find the will. Well, we better put the squeeze on him. No later than tonight. We haven't much time. The news will be out any day. Right. Be here after dark. Harris's watch. Scatter the pieces. All right, boss. for 25 years of loyal service, Mineral City Division, Southwest Railroad. Tag, there must be some connection with that key. I'm riding to Mineral City to find out who John Harris was. What about Lofty? Well, it's his day off. You stay here, and if he comes in, tell him where I've gone. Well, OK. I'm sure glad you play cribbage. You know, your uncle and me used to play most every night. I just love quiet evenings. <laughs> oh, dear. And some of these days, the sneeze is going to be the death of me, but not this time. Oh. Reach, both of them. Oh. Who are you and what do you want? We're asking the questions, mister. You forged a will to this farmhouse. Where is it? Ford. Why, you mean, you pole cat, you it ain't forging, you ain't gonna get it. Oh, Chanta, darling, I think I'm going to faint. It's my heart. I just can't stand excitement. You, you mean you want me to give it to him? Oh, anything, just to get rid of them. Well, just as you say, but now, don't, don't faint, don't do it. I'll, I'll give up. It, it, over there in my... It's me, Elaine. Lofty. It's that deputy. <laughs> Come in, Lofty. Oh, what lovely flowers. Not nearly as pretty as... Well, you no good double-crossing female, you. I... You lunkhead! How are we going to make him talk if you kill him? Get some water. Oh, the rotten luck. One more minute and he would have spilled it. Oh. Tag, tag. Where's Lofty? He hasn't been in all day. Find out anything? I found out plenty, but I need Lofty. Oh! Oh, you poured enough water on him to drown him. Get him up here. Uh. Now listen to me, Choctaw. Who are you? Who am I? Yeah, some hit me on the head. Say you're a right pretty lady. How did you get here? He must have lost his memory. Oh, he's stalling. Well, you can't get away with it. Where's the will? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The last thing I remember, I was playing cribbage with Sam Forbes. Oh, where's Sam? He did get hit pretty hard. Give me your snuff tobacco. One thing you'll remember is those sneezes. I'm counting to ten, and then you get this. One, two, Everybody. They were trying to get Choctaw's will, Annie. He... Yeah, but I fooled them. <laughs> sure hate to spoil your party, Lily Maid, but I just got back from Mineral City. They told me you were Simon Forbes' niece, all right. You could have spared yourself the trip. And that you also worked in a dance hall, where you found out that the railroad was going to put a spur line right through Diablo, and that they'd pay up to $50,000 for this ranch. For this rattlesnake farm? Well, it's got the only pass over the mountains. And that's why Lily Maid had her uncle killed. And Harris, the railroad man who was coming here to make a bid. Now you reach me, please. Drop that gun. Oh. This time I'm not counting, Choctaw. Where's that will? Oh, I always carry it in my hat. Over there. I'm sorry, Annie. Here it is. Thank <laughs> you. 
Me here? You didn't tell me not to this time. And it's Indian artillery saved us. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, but don't do it again. Over there, Lily Maid. Why, Lofty, how rude of you. <laughs> Come on out. Come on, step it up. Step it up.